In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to create a bar chart using ArcGIS Pro. Now, bar charts can be created um, either from layers, essentially feature classes, or from standalone tables. In this case, we're going to keep it pretty simple. We're going to look at uh, building a bar chart from a standalone table. And the, uh, the table that we're going to use is called Median Acres Burned by Decade. And uh, so you can see I've already got this table open. Very simple table, and uh, essentially what it shows is by decade, um, how, what's the mean acreage burned by a wildfire. And uh, so you'll see numeric column here for mean acres burned, decade column uh, lists uh, each of the decades for which we have information. So again, this is just all we're wanting to do here is to create a bar chart that shows by decade what is the uh, mean acreage burned of a wildfire. And uh, so uh, to kind of initiate this process, you'll uh, want to make sure that the layer or the table has been selected in the contents pane. And then you'll go to either standalone table or feature layer. In this case, I've got a standalone table. So that's going to be my context uh, menu tab. Uh, but keep in mind, if you have selected a layer, that's going to say feature layer. And then you'll also have that data tab. When you click on the data tab, on the far right hand side, there's a create chart button. If you click the drop down arrow, one of your options is going to be bar chart. We'll click on that. And what that's going to do is it's going to initiate the, uh, the chart properties pane that you see here. First thing we'll want to do is select the category or date. So a bar chart essentially shows uh, category, categorical information and the number of observations for each of those categories. So in this case, my category is going to be decade. Uh, we're going to select a numeric field in this case for the number of observations, which is going to be mean acres burned. And you can see already it's already generated a, uh, a chart for me. Now we're going to kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, we want to perhaps label these bars. Right? You can kind of get a pretty decent feel of what the numeric value is that's associated with each decade. But you may want to label the bars. And you'll see now we get a label uh, giving the exact number uh, that's associated with that categorical information. In this case, my decades are going from left to right, uh, moving up, but you might want to switch that. So in this case, rather than selecting uh, the default, which is x-axis ascending, we're going to select x-axis descending, and you'll see that switches the order here so that most our most recent data is going to be the, the first bar you know, in the plot. Uh, now we're also going to update a few other things here. Uh, if I go to general, um, I'm going to change the title and we're just going to call this uh, mean acres burned by decades. So we're going to just kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, for the x-axis title, which is decade, we're just going to uh, make this proper case. For the y-axis, We'll change that to mean acres and we'll leave the rest as the default. But you can see as you're making changes, uh, it automatically updates uh, your chart. Now there's other things you can do here. Um, we're not going to, we're just going to go with the defaults here. We're going to do a stacked, or sorry, a side by side bar chart. Uh, if you, you can also stack your data uh, as well. Uh, in this case, we don't have any real need to do stacking. Uh, on the X and Y axis, uh, you can change various properties here, including the label character limit, which isn't really an issue here. Y axis, uh, your balance right now, the minimum value or the maximum value for your balance is going to be whatever the upper limit is for any of your bar charts. That can be changed if you want to. Uh, you may need to change the number format. I don't need to do that here. Uh, it looks, looks pretty clean in terms of the number format for my Y axis. Not really going to add any guides here. Under formatting, we are going to change this from the default, which is a light uh, color scheme uh, theme, to a medium uh, custom theme. So you can very easily change some of the theming options here. Uh, and we'll keep it, like I said, we're going to keep it simple. But you can also uh, make changes to the various text elements. So any of the text elements that you see on the chart, you can change various aspects of this. You can change the font, the font style, font size, color. And you can see you have various options here for chart title, legend, uh, text and title, uh, access titles and labels. So you do have full control over the styling of the text that gets placed onto the chart. 
Uh, and then there's some symbol elements you can change here as well. I'm not going to do that here. We're just going to keep things uh, fairly simple. All right. Now, once you've got the chart, you can also um, manipulate the chart in different ways. So you can zoom. Right. You can change the mouse to, to uh, change the mouse to zoom mode, which allows you to zoom in and zoom out on your data. Uh, you can create selection sets. So for, in this case, there's not really any, any need to do that. But if you right, you know, if you select a rectangle and then go back and look at the underlying data you'll notice that that record has been selected in the underlying data as well that that's more useful for situations where you're dealing you know here we've got a pretty limited set of data right we've only got four records but this is can be useful for situations where uh, particularly where you're working with uh, a layer and you may want to select all the features that are associated with a category that, that tends to be more valuable in those types of situations um, so other things you can do here, uh, you can rotate your chart, uh, you can work with selection set, so you can switch the selection, clear your selection. Uh, you can also open the attribute table, which is already open, so I don't really need to do that. You can filter your data. Uh, there's some handy options here for exporting your data. So you can export your data out as graphics or tables. And uh, you know, so multiple functions here. You can also open the chart pane, which we already have open, so we don't need to do that here. All right, so uh, hopefully that gives you an overview of, of creating a bar chart. Obviously, there are more advanced things you can do here, but uh, uh, hopefully this gives you a pretty good overview of creating bar charts using ArcGIS Pro. And that's it for this time. Thanks for joining me.